Let's talk some GameStop. Uh, shares at 14 bucks, 84 cents at the close. Uh, a little changed right now. Still operating at a loss, about $3 million for the trailing third quarter, a, a cent uh, for EPS. They did about uh, 1.01 billion, 1.08 rather, uh, for the period. So a year ago, it was 1.19. So they're kind of still slipping there a little bit. And uh, expenses are still pretty high, though they did drop from a year ago, about $300 million. Uh, definitely operating a net loss. They've got a good bit of cash, though. I mean, they've got $1.2 billion. Just doesn't seem like they know really what to do with it, Caroline. Yeah, I'm just looking here. So, as you said, a miss on the top line because the expectation, you, you had mentioned 1.08 is a miss because the expectation was for 1.16 billion, also down mm. from the previous year's 1.186. But it's a beat on the bottom line because the loss of one cent per share on an adjusted basis is far narrower than the 12 cent per share loss that Wall Street was expecting. So, mix there. Yes, cash, cash equivalents. 1.2 billion dollars at the close of the quarter so still have cash on hand i uh, was just looking to see if there was any commentary i guess i probably have to wait to the earnings call these are always interesting just to see if there's any impact from the dumb money uh movie because <laughs> that obviously gamestop's the og meme stock and uh, you know, it, it certainly was back in, in in a lot of conversations with that movie. I even went and saw it. But, you know, GameStop dealing with a, a shift from buy, people buying physical games to digital games, a shift to, you know, a lot of people buying PC games, which I'm told are downloaded digitally. Oliver, correct. maybe you can attest to that. That is correct. I will tell you, I did go to my first GameStop last month. Oh. Uh, there's a third party shipping company that actually you can ship from GameStop, so I went with a family member. And uh, <laughs> memorabilia was a, or collectibles was yeah. a big thing Did you there. buy the, some the Funkos? Were trying to, I bought or nothing, you, but they were oh. trying to say, like, aren't these things so cute? You know, like the, the salespeople were um, exactly who you would expect would be working there. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, they didn't, get, they didn't get any sales off me, but I, apparently they're doing third party shipping uh, for other companies as well. Yeah. So still trying to diversify. That's like the, the bell to be, tools uh, you know, for the, that's like, you know, when Kohl's starts doing <laughs> your Amazon orders. I mean, that's like, hey, look, look, by the way, they're not even gonna do a conference call here. Ryan Cohen, CEO, no conference call? Are they just like giving up? Kevin, uh, what the heck? Yeah, a very interesting move. I mean, we continue to see this type of, uh, you know, situation when it comes to the conference call. But when you're actually looking at the data here, I think it, there is some bright spots, especially when you're looking at gross profit. That actually increased to 26.1%. Street was looking for gross profit or gross margins to come in at around 25.1%. So I'm actually a little bit surprised that we're not seeing more of a positive reaction to this earnings announcement. But I think we have seen so many conference calls being canceled or they're not having a conference call that the market's probably okay with it at this point in time. All right. Uh, so I guess we wait and we see. It doesn't look like there's really anything here to, uh, you know, hang our hat on from these earnings other than just continued sort of deterioration of sales. Uh, a little cash they could do something with, but hard to know what it is. And they couldn't convince Caroline Woods to buy anything in there. All right. Uh, let's talk some Chewy. As uh, it's been a really rough year for the stock, kind of looks like maybe some of that might continue in the aftermarket. We're slipping a little bit more than a buck, though their adjusted earnings seem to beat the estimate. Uh, they did lose money on a gap basis of eight cents, but they're adjusted 15 cents ahead of what the market thought was going to be an adjusted loss still, uh, but maybe not a, a perfect sales number, Caroline. It kind of seems like uh, there's a little bit of uh, give and take here, kind of one miss, one beat. Yes, another Ryan Cohen company, this one co-founded by Ryan Cohen, another company that gets no money from me because it's an online pet retailer and I have no pets. But, uh, you know, we've been seeing a lot of signs that the consumer is turning more cautious, even when it comes to their pets. And if you take a look at this revenue miss, could be a continuation of that. The expectation was for around 2.75, 2.76 billion. And uh, they fell slightly short at 2.74. So we'll see, you know, th this is obviously one that has already been down almost 50% 
in 2023, so the expectations aren't too high, like with some of the companies that we've seen that are priced to perfection. So maybe Wall Street will be a bit more forgiving. Doesn't necessarily seem to be the case right now. But yes, on an adjusted basis, the expectation was for about nine cents per share. Chewy did beat coming in at 15 cents per share, but uh, you know, in, in terms of the gap number, did swing to a quarterly loss, which was expected. Also looking for the active customer count. Previously, they reported 20.39 million in the period. That was actually a decline. Looking to see if they return to customer growth, but I, of course, on the spot, can't necessarily find that number right now, but 20.39 million is the number to beat there. So let's take a look at that. And then, of course, net sales per active customer will be important. I'm assuming Chewy will have a conference call today, but also keep in mind, they'll have an investor day on December 14th next week. So that should possibly shed some more light in terms of outlook from Chewy as well. But right now, it looks like a mixed report and uh, doesn't necessarily seem to be impressing Wall Street in the after hours. I know that they will uh, need to keep growing and uh, keeping Amazon off their back, but you know, to be hovering around this profitability and an unadjusted loss, I mean, it's not that complicated of a business model here, I feel like, Kevin. Uh, you know, a lot of folks have figured this out now, how to run an online marketplace. Uh, do, you know, what's taking so long here? I think they've also spent a lot of money trying to diversify their business as well. So I want to get a little mm, bit more of an the healthcare when it stuff comes to their the, the, exactly, yeah. Because I mean, they have been touting that it's going to be pretty much economic resilient and it's going to be very strong. But it seems like they're spending a lot more money on the on that particular area of the business, and they're just not seeing the returns as of yet. Actually, net margins actually did decrease by about 1.4 uh, percent uh, for the quarter. That's not something that you want to see from a broader uh, standpoint here. And then when you also have guidance that might be a a little bit weak compared to what the street's expectations are. I think you are right there. I mean, at the end of the day, there's other competitors that have been able to manage and capitalize on the space. It just seems like they're either doing too much or they need to pare down maybe some of the uh, business ventures that they've tried to uh, expand on over the last year and a half. Okay. They're going to bring on a semiconductor expert from Global Foundries, David Reeder, as their chief financial officer. So they also did announce uh, a CFO here, and maybe that'll address some of what we're talking about here. What I mentioned for the uh, profitability side, because uh, they got to yeah compete, have some good business, uh, you know, outside of just the basics. But they also uh, in this market right now need to show a little bit more, it feels like, attention to the profitability metrics, the cash flows and stuff, given how important that's been to distinguishing good stocks from bad stocks uh, in the higher rate environment. Uh, they keep talking about gaining market share. Maybe the market can give them a pass for that, Caroline, if uh, you know, they keep their customers sticky. I feel like that's the big, big part, because it feels like once you get a recurring, I know from my experience, used to be on Chewy, they didn't have something during COVID. I've said this like four times now over the last two years. I've never ordered anything since because now I'm stuck on Amazon. They just send me the cat food. <laughs> I thought that I was going to say I thought you had to go to Chewy for your cat food because Amazon didn't sell it. If I remember correctly, yeah. I have to. Chewy have to ran check out of it. Oliver Rennick notes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I I might disagree though with that comment. Okay. That profitability is key to uh, companies that are you know to Wall Street in a higher rate environment because there have been so many unprofitable companies that have done well this year. I just think that it really depends True. on the sector, right? Chewy doesn't necessarily have the AI, the tech slant that uh, Wall Street has been so forgiving on. So, yeah, this is definitely one that's not profitable, in, except for on an adjusted basis. But I, I don't necessarily feel like that's been the case this year. Last year, f for sure. But yeah, I mean, I haven't seen. I was just taking, watching the stock as the headline about the new CFO uh, came out. Didn't see any immediate uptick. But obviously, we have to give time for for investors to kind of, uh, you know, digest this. Um, you know this information and also let's see what they say on the earnings call which will happen at 5 p.m eastern so they are having a conference call and you know also with that investor day but yeah chewy down 50 percent year to date but up about 11 percent in december so there was some positivity heading into this report but doesn't necessarily look like it's going to stick based on the numbers all right
Yeah, uh, Chewy has just been literally decimated, uh, you know, almost like 90% off the highs, a little bit better than that now. Does it seem deserving of such punishment, Kevin, to kind of close the book on this conversation? I mean, it's trying to operate as a consumer discretionary company when you're looking at the multiples, but it's really trying, it's really a, a consumer staple, if you will. And I'm not sure if they've been able to get those customers to be as sticky as you're kind of talking about when it comes to the recurring uh, uh, purchases and things of that nature. Also, the stock-based compensation continues to eat into their adjusted uh, profitability. And I think that's going to be, once mm. again, a, a situation where, as Caroline was talking about, uh, the market's okay with that if you're a tech company, if you're a high growth company and you have this high a, a ratio of share-based compensation, but if you are a staple uh, trying to break into this business and maintain this business, it seems like you're just not going to get rewarded uh, as much. And I think that's probably why we continue to see the stock slide um, after these earnings announcements. Did see the uh, net sales per active customer over $540, so that is a better than expected figure. Street was looking for like 538 there, so there are some uh, decent Good. numbers. Yeah, go ahead. 20.3 million, 20 million active customers. Oh, so they missed it. A little it. bit less than the, the previous quarter, so a sequential decline in terms. So they're not returning to customer growth, even if customers are spending a little bit more money. Yeah, good point. All right, so they came up a little shy there on the key metric. All right, uh, thanks, Kevin Green, Caroline Woods.